Are you one of those players that hits a lot of balls, but a lot of times just hits through the middle with a partner? To my mind, I think you can do better. Because if you are a competitive player, if you're playing league matches, whatever it is, you're having to compete and you're not just hitting through the middle of the court. So every time you go out on the court, you should have a purpose. You should have a goal. You want to have an objective that you want to accomplish with each drill. So I'm going to show you my favorite singles drills. You can do them competitively, which I think is another great way to get match tough and you can work with them in progressions. So every time you go out, you have an objective, you have a goal of what you're doing with every single ball. No mindless hitting around here. My name is Mike Babel. I'm a former top 30 WTA pro, 19 times Grand Slam competitor. And one of my coaches always said, if you're just hitting the ball without any brain, it's a waste of time. So let's have some purpose out there. Now the first drill is a very simple drill and I always use that for warm up. So you see those cones? We have the same three cones on my partner's side. It's a warm up drill for me where you already have a focus. So you're not just hitting and you're kind of, you know, lollygagging and you're kind of thinking about other stuff. No, you want to hit your partner's cones. So it's kind of like a battleship, um, the tennis court. And the way to progress that is you can of course do your forehands cross court or your backhands cross court. So you just move your targets. You can of course move them up. That makes it probably a little simpler or you can use fewer cones. So again, depending on your level of play, you can use this drill and just make it a little easier or a little tougher. So let's see how we're doing. And now, There it is. That is your battleship. The next drill is called find your forehand. And what I mean by that is if you look at the court, I'm making it about 65, almost 70% by cutting this court here into sections with my either throw lines, dots, or on clay, you can just draw a line there. And what we're going to do is as a start, we're just going to rally and you have to take forehands only to the left of this line. If I'm on the court back here, it's to the right of the line. If you're a left-hander, of course, you're gonna do it the other way around, but this is a great drill to start working on your footwork when balls are coming more into the middle that usually you would take as your backhand but you're now starting to become a little bit more aggressive and trying to find your forehand. Use your forehand to dictate the point. This is a drill that I've seen a lot of current world-class players do because the game really has changed from when I played. Um, and on the women's side, Ash Barty, Karolina Pliskova, Sabalenka, they all have great backhands, but all great backhand players are still wanting their forehands to open the court. So that is one thing that will really get you up higher in the ratings if you start finding your forehand. And this is a great drill. The progression for this drill is that you start to play points with that. So any ball that comes to the right side here will have to be played with the forehand. So you want to get the ball of your opponent's side more to the at side and force them to potentially get jammed. And if they can't hit a foreign from there, you get the point. Can't get it enough so that you have to work. There we go. Uh-oh.
The next drill is called pinch drill. Now, when somebody's blasting the ball at you pretty deep, pretty hard, pretty flat, oftentimes you don't have time to move back. And if you're falling off that ball here, you end up shanking it. So you see it a lot that world-class players don't back up. Instead, they're sitting low down to the ball. So what that does is you're basically putting a barrier behind you here and you cannot back up behind that barrier. So you can do that just rallying and then of course to progress that drill you played for points. And all right, so starting with just rallying, getting the feel for what we have to do to sit low against these balls and not moving back. So expect a little bit of a potential um, crash here. My goal is to get the ball deep so that Brian gets in trouble. There we go. Oh, and then he hits that. Oh, that's out. Yeah, I got to short up your take back, maybe. There we go. That's it. All right, next drill. One person feeds, I'm the feeder. I feed from my single sideline. I have to go cross court. Brian has to go cross court. So, so far, very good and very easy or simple. But the kicker is that I'm feeding the ball. I have to recover to the center and then I have to get that ball. So I'm working out of a very passive situation here. So let's see how that goes. All right, ready? All right, I'm feeding cross court, middle, and then the point is open. Oh, that is so hopefully out. And Brian can do with that cross court whatever he wants to do. Just a little wide. And of course, we can do the exact same thing from the back end. Let's do one from the back end side. You can feed with your forehand, of course. Okay, so I'm feeding here, cross court. I have to recover to the middle, and then the point is open. Ooh, that was a good point, though. See, neither of us had a ball short enough to change direction. So what you're learning here as defender is that your best defense is actually to go cross court. All right, so the next drill is called change of direction drill. What I have to do is I have to cross, go cross court no matter what. I cannot go down the line. I do not get to open the point. It's a singles game, of course. Brian can do whatever he wants cross court and when he thinks he has the chance to go down the line when it makes sense for him he goes down the line and then the point is open and then either one of us can do whatever we want if by accident i go down the line i lose the point if by accident brian goes down the line then the point is still open so i'm working on keeping the ball ideally deep and heavy so that he cannot change direction because balls that lend themselves to be attacked are balls that hang a little bit more in the middle and um, of course are a little shorter so that he can move up. So I'm defender, he is the changer of direction. All right, are we ready? Woo, all right. 
cross court. So I have to do my darnest to recover. And Brian is very patient. Oh, he goes down the line. Now we can do whatever we want. Do not push that ball deep, Babel. Wow. That never happened. You didn't see that one. Oh, that is in. Oh, I am in deep trouble. Ah. All right, let's do it the other way. You're the defender on the cross court on the outside. And I can go up the line when I think I'm ready. Who knows? Yeah, I'm tired. Maybe I'm going down the line because I'm tired, which is not necessarily the best choice. But here comes our second drill or third drill I think we did, finding your forehand into play. So I can change direction by moving around my backhand and get my forehand here, which theoretically is a forehand cross court. It's my natural rotation here. It's a lower percentage shot. But that is what all world-class players are looking for, and so should you. All right, I can change direction. Let's do it. Oh, that's where, nope, cannot get around it. I was outsliced. I think I got robbed. Anyways, you get the drill. So very obviously we have to work on my volley. So the next drill is approach shot and pass. So what I'm gonna do is I start in the middle I can feed the ball either to uh, Brian's forehand or backhand in the center of the court and short. He has to approach my backhand. So you can't just rip a winner anyway. He has to go to my backhand. And then of course later we can do the same drill so then he attacks my backhand. But he comes in and will play the point out. So I'm working on, well, A, making his ball, getting it, and then potentially dipping it down to um, his feet. And he's working on making his approach shot and then the first volley. And of course we play that for points, right? We always compete. That should be juicy. Good. Now, one thing is easy to do. When you feed, you already walk over. Try not to do that, All right? So you hold your middle here a little bit and then you play the point. That's too good. That's not good enough. All right, good. All right, Brian feeds me approach shot. So we're switching roles. You can play that to seven, to 11. Target either side, but make sure you play points. And so if by accident you feed it too deep and it would be a ball that in a match you would never take to come in, don't take it for the drill either. Why are you getting all these balls? Oh wait, I play with a 25 year old. All right, so approach. Oh, I punched that a little deep. Oh, do it again, I tripped over my own feet. All right, now I got this. Now I can go home. This was the 14th attempt. I lost 13, I made one. We can now stop. You can do that with your clients. I'm done.